Hey guys, it's Jed and Jen. And in this video, we're gonna go over three simple hand fidgets that you can use to help your kids bust dress, boost their mood, and really focus when they need to pay attention. Now, I first learned these from you. Yeah. Um... Yep, we were kind of teaching together in a Sunday school classroom and had a lot of fidgety, anxious kids. Um, so we worked on a couple of um, tools that I use often in the school setting um, to teach kids how to um, regulate themselves so that they're ready to learn. Now here's a good thing about these, is they are exactly like those fidget spinners that you used to hear all the time, only they're completely different. So those fidget spinners, one, they're loud, so they disrupt the classroom. Two, kids, they're toys. Yeah, they're toys. <laughs> I guess there's no other way to say it. And so this is one of those fidgets that kids can use when they need to wiggle, because there's a reason for that fidget spinner craze, Yeah, right? and, it's, and it's not that the fidgets weren't effective. They were if they were taught correctly as a tool. Um, but what ended up happening uh, oftentimes is that those are really, really fun and distracting. And so they became a distraction and a toy rather than a tool to help stay regulated. Um, so those are the, that's the difference. So it's really important to teach kids the why, not that this is just something fun to do. Otherwise, it becomes a distraction. All right, so the bottom line is kids have a lot of pent up energy. Who knew, right? And sometimes they need to wiggle. So as simple as this is, like this is what I will call the original fidget spinner. Yep. And then I challenge kids to go backwards too. Like, ooh, can you go both forwards and reverse? All right, so here's the cool thing about it though, is when I work with kids, I will have them practice putting their hands under the desk, looking me in the eye, going forwards, going backwards, fidget's still going. And so if you're in school and you're doing a circle time, this might be a little bit distracting, but it's not nearly as distracting as having a kid squirm and move and dance and all of that. And so the whole goal is, okay, how can we get our kids moving in a way where they can still focus and pay attention to? Yeah, now, it's you... really that piece of, of noticing that behavior mm -hmm. happens for a reason, right? Um, kids move because they need to move. So how can we give them the movement piece without it becoming a distraction? Now, you've got some that I like even better than the fidget spinner one. So we use um, often use the finger touches. So this one is a little more out invisible, um, but it's also a little more difficult. Um, so for kids that really, really need to <laughs> kind of get focused um, and training their brains to focus, this is one. Um, so I'm just touching my fingertips together. Um, and we'll start out really slow just doing this um, and then start trying to go faster. Um, and you have to be use some discretion with who you teach this one to because um, if, if they have a low frustration tolerance and they have difficulty with the fine motor movement, this is not the one for them. Um, but for your kids, especially a little older kids, this can be a really good one. And again, it can be done right under the desk. I can learn to do it without looking at my fingers. Um, so I am showing that whole body listening. My eyes are on the speaker. I am paying attention, but I'm getting some movement and my brain is kind of focusing. Now this is my favorite one for those fourth and fifth grade boys because I make it a challenge. First I say, you know, can you do it forwards and backwards? But then it's the, now can you do it and look me in the eyes at the same time? And it becomes the, it's a challenge. And then eventually they can sit quietly in circle time and do this or wherever they need to sit. And here's the cool thing. I've had parents come and tell me, hey, we got to the doctor's office and I told my kids, you've got to sit quietly. And the first thing they did was sit up and start doing this. And so these fidgets really work. Now you've got yeah. one more that kind of ties into breathing too, right? Yeah, so this is not so much um, not so much a fidget as it is a, like a breathing exercise. So for some of our kids that just, it's not so much the movement, but it's needing to take some breaths or kind of calm down, or I'm getting frustrated with an assignment or a lesson or those kind of things. Um, so doing five finger breaths. So um, um, they just start at the bottom of the finger, breathe in, breathe out. And so they learn to trace. And there's something kind of calming about the touch on this one too. Um, and then they're also getting that breath. Um, some of my kids really want to go fast. <sighs> and so reminding them that the entire purpose is to slow down, right? How slow can they do it? <sighs> Becomes kind of... Um, uh, a neat tool to use. How slowly can you trace? Because then they're really kind of slowing down and mm -hmm. calming that body. Now, one other thing that I love about these, one, they work. And it's surprising how well they work. 
Two, it's surprising how much you can engage one kid or even a room full of kids just with no tools, with nothing. So if you're in a classroom of kids or a group of kids and you've got to do something at a moment's notice and they're squirmy and antsy and moving all around, you know, to challenge them with a couple of these and then to end with the slow deep breaths and just bring the energy down. Like this is something you've always got with you that can help kids calm down, re-regulate and focus. So can try them out. More? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this isn't a finger tool, but it is um, an in your space tool. So another one, if you do notice that your whole class is really kind of wiggly, um, I think that's especially important. Um, Right now, we're inside a lot, you know, it's colder out. It's harder to get some of that gross motor movement for kids. Um, so another really good one is that if they're at their desks or in their chairs um, and they're sitting is to push their whole body up off their chair. So it's chair sit-ups. Um, so I don't have a chair to demonstrate, but if they're sitting on their chair, they just put their hands on the two sides, right? And so if I'm up like this, and then they push until they raise their body up and down. And so you can stop your whole class, have them do five chair push-ups, um, and then do a five finger breath breathing. And so they get a little bit of that movement, then they calm down. Okay, now it's time to refocus. I love that. Now I'd imagine great for homeschool parents too, even mm -hmm. if you're one-on-one -on -one and just need that minute break. So. Give it a try. I think you'll like these.